Well, let's look at the last wicket then. Jim Love. Dermot Reeve, the bowler. Yeah, and as I said, Jim did two or three big hits and he went for another one here. Didn't quite middle it, it went skying up towards mid off. Comfortable catch. But Jim had done his job very well, he could be well satisfied. 208 for five, and, and uh, we ought to say that Hartley made 50 off 36 balls, including two sixes and five fours. And 105 runs came off the last 10 overs, 58 off the last five, and it does, of course, emphasise that not so much what happens in the first 10 as what happens in the last 10 at this abbreviated yes, it's, game. It's obviously when you bat first, it's much easier because you've got wickets in hand and you can throw the bat and it always seems to come off. When you need to score 110 overs at the death, it's much harder if you've gone against the total. Mm. And so this is the position Sussex now find themselves in. They're going to have to get somebody like Neil Hartley to do that for them if they're going to have a chance of winning. Bill Alley there in his last season as an umpire, a ripe character, a, a much-loved character, an Australian who's been in the league here and playing for Somerset. Last man to make 3,000 runs in an English summer, 1961. We shall miss him. I think it was about 50 then, Bill, but he won't admit to it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what, what age he is admitting to now. No. Roy Palmer is the other umpire. We've just got time before they start again to show you the first Sussex wicket. It belonged to the captain, John Barclay, facing Oldham. And Steve Oldham got very close in there and bowled it round about leg and middle, but the ball held its line with him getting so close to the stumps. You can see it again how close he is to the stumps. And if he hadn't, if he hadn't got up close, they wouldn't have got that decision, but it made it go on a very straight line, which was very good, good ball in that. Barkley out for 14. And that's the up-to-date card. 113 for four off 35 overs. And uh, two wickets in two balls for... Graham Stevenson, who didn't get a look in with the bat, but is a very talented all-rounder and usually makes his uh, presence felt in one way or another in a one-day game. He really has got so much talent, hasn't he? He has. He's got the ability to bat and make hundreds of Graham if he'd just knuckle down and do it. The uh, not-out batsman. There's their target. Another 148 in 20 overs. Alan Wells and Ian Gregg. And we can just have a quick look at the uh, scores from the other games. I can tell you straight away, there's been no play at all at Trent Bridge. They've abandoned things between Nottinghamshire and Surrey. They never got started. Essex, Lancashire, that looks a tight one. Essex all out, 157. Lancashire, 36 for three off, 21 overs. Might go either way. I should think Lancashire are working hard there. That just confirms what I told you at uh, Trent Bridge. <coughs> And at Edgbaston, Warwickshire's batting strength, 282 for five. Andy Lloyd in pretty good nick these days, 77. Kelly Turan, 63. Somerset after a grisly start, 11 for two, I think they were. 112 for four, recovering, 28 overs, 27 to go. Martin Crowe, 69, not out. And we suspect uh, Mr. Botham is to come. Commentary now from Jim Laker. Thank you, Peter. So it's a fairly tall order. Also here for Sussex, having to score at uh, best part of seven and a half runs and over if they're going to clinch a place here in the b and semi-final. Hartley the bowler again. So best oh, sticking to the attack we saw just before T here. The two uh, not out batsmen are uh, Alan Wells. He's made 33 in pretty good style, and his partner up far end, you can see now, is uh, Ian Gregg. Enough for uh, Bairstow to make a bowling change. Pulling uh, Hartley out of the tuck and uh, being replaced by Steve Oldham. Well, the pressure's telling on the Yorkshire players. Suddenly, from a, what was going to be an easy win, the game's changed. Yorkshire looking to one of their senior players here, Steve Oldham, who left Yorkshire a few years back to go and play his cricket at Derbyshire, has come back this year. He's uh, 35 years of age you now. Uh, he's got one wicket to his name so far, one for 18 as he starts his ninth over. And he's given LBW. 
Trying to swing that one off round about middle stump there, looking for another one over the square leg umpire. And that was a good bowling change and a pretty vital one too for Yorkshire. Steve, Steve Oldham bowls very close to the stumps and that means also anything pitching on middle stump means that it's going to be hitting. So he's going to get much, far more LBWs than say a bowler who bowls wider of the stumps. Well, that ends a pretty good partnership. Uh, Tim Wells and Greg, they put on 61 and just 66 balls. So 145 for five now. This is the uh, chunky figure of Ian Gould coming in. Ian Gould has played some fine innings for Sussex. He plays quite fast. He's got quite a few shots. And perhaps the combination of a left-hander and a right-hander might just keep the score ticking along. But I thought that Garth was the man for the occasion because Sussex, more than anything, need a few big hits. Hold him then to Gould. Once one, just as well as they didn't go. I don't think they would have got halfway. Ox and the man moving in quickly there. Short, nice one for uh, Gould to get underway with. Pulled away down to a square leg for a single. Shot. You don't see that shot played uh, too often these days. A pleasant uh, latish cut down the third man. Deep uh, strike with Ian Gregg. One forty seven for five. Bowling change worked out there. Holden one for two in that over, two for 20 in all. He's only got two overs left to come now. Two wickets to Stevenson. On to Moxon. of the Yorkshire bowlers have performed this afternoon without to the one spinner Carrick. Two each for Oldham and Stevenson and a wicket for Moxon. <coughs> Recall in for Graham Stevenson. Stevenson still got a few overs in hand, but he's bowled only six. Two for 20 so far. <laughs> a 
So 7.6 wanted, 114 from 15 overs. Well, the last wicket, the last minute conference there. Best of calling Boy get in from the boundary to have a quick word. Facing on 27. Yorkshire have looked very competent in the field today. They fielded extremely well and certainly bowled very well. They've used the wicket, they've kept the, their line in length, they bowled within the stumps. And also, the sort of bowling Yorkshire's got was ideally suited for this wicket, too. Come in, come in. Yes, beautifully caught, deep square. Exceedingly safe pair of hands out there, Neil Hartley. And uh, actual fact, he never really looked like dropping it. Approached that catch with a great deal of confidence, moved nicely into position. And that's a blow for uh, Sussex because I thought Ian Gregg there had started to play exceedingly well. He certainly took it very comfortably, as if he saw it all the way. The departure of Greg, the arrival of uh, Garth LaRue, and uh, one would think that Sussex hopes I finally rest with this uh, very solidly built South African, immensely strong man. But, uh, they will need some sort of hurricane performance from him now. It's a longish boundary today uh, towards the pavilion, and might well have been six on the other side. Going for the long boundary and beautifully judged there by Hartley. Really is expecting a lot from Garth LaRue. But he has won Sussex matches in similar situations before. Tremendous hitter off the ball. He's got a watching brief at the moment. It's Gould to face. So Bestow's made a couple of quite useful bowling changes there. Look back Oldham, who's done the trick for him, and now Stevenson doing the same at the far end. There's another one going out there, just uh, bouncing uh, short of Hartley this time. Optimistic shouts of this cricket season. <laughs> Stevenson to LaRue. Come in, come in. Let the bat go there. Uh, won't reach the fence. Uh, it's two to low. <laughs> 
Interesting look at the comparison there after 41 overs. The difference, of course, of the number of wickets lost. Yorkshire won 49, but they'd only lost three. Sussex, in fact, have scored one more, but uh, six, six men are out. And the uh, latest scores up and down the country at Chelmsford. Uh, Lancashire replied to Essex total of 157 and made 89 for three. Hughes is 25, not out there, and Abraham's 28, not out. Uh, no play today. Wicket too wet at uh, Trent Bridge in the not sorry match. And finally at uh, Edgbaston. Somerset now 152 for four, chasing that big Warwickshire total of 282 for five. But Martin Crowe is not out 87, and both of them not out 20. Neatly taken on the left side by Bairstow. Bairstow today has done a great job. Not only has he kept well, but he's led his side with a lot of confidence and purpose. One fifty for six then, Sussex standard. They're up with the run rate, but they've lost uh, rather too many wickets. Just seen a good flurry there from Alan Wells, who played exceedingly well for his 51. Greg partnered him well with 27. Mendes made a good 41 at the start of the innings, but uh, at this stage, one must say that uh, Yorkshire will be pretty firm favourites to go through into the semi-final. Three spell, what a good one it's been. Ten overs, two for 22 so far. One uh, 52, now for six. Only 13 overs left. Run rate increasing all the time now, 8.38. I think we might soon see Garth launching into a few massive hits. Facing again. It's a biggish hit. He's not bothering to run. The moment it left the bat, he knew it was well on its way. Six over long arm to Garth LaRue. And uh, that's what the locals here are looking forward to. And some amount of strength and power going into that. Long way up there for six. Respect for the speed and arm of uh, Neil Hartley out there. Oh, 
It's a difference of opinion at the moment between the wicketkeeper and the bowler. Keeper signalling the fielder in one direction and the bowler in the other. We've got a compromise in the end. In the air, but saved. Nicely placed by Ian Gould. He hasn't uh, got the legs, I don't think, to make four. They'll have to run them. They've completed three. One sixty two for six, so six after forty two and a half overs, requiring uh, uh, and two hundred and sixty one to win. So it's going pretty much Yorkshire's way. Good bowling by Stevenson, three uh, good wickets there. In fact, uh, been pretty good tight bowling by most of the Yorkshire people. But they've got to get rid of Larue. He's the one danger man. He's in there. He's just struck an almighty big six down to uh, area of long on. But not much really to come after him. So uh, Yorkshire will be pleased and Bairstow in particular has handled his side well there today. 98 more wanted. They've got to score at a little over 8 and over. 12 overs left and one rather imagines it might be beyond them. After 43 overs, 164 Sussex, which is 12 more than Yorkshire had made. But uh, the difference there, of course, is in the number of wickets. Steve Oldham, who's bowled really well here today, and now for his final over. Oh, that wasn't far away. Good delivery, just cut away from the left-hander. And in fact, Steve Oldham has bowled particularly well today. He's given the batsman absolutely nothing. He's got very near the stumps and just moved it a little bit either way. 